Um, I wouldn't say I'm like overjoyed. Um, you know, I think there's still problems at the, at the at the club, but I have to say, I was impressed yesterday with the performance of the team, especially in the second half. You know, they really dominated the play. Um, they looked like they was enjoying themselves, which was strange mm. because when I've watched them most weeks, they they look like they hate football. And now I don't know whether that's Antonio Conte being on the side. I really don't know because I'm not in the dressing room. But just from my look of it, it looks like the players are enjoying playing football. It looks like the shackles are off a little bit. Um, and that might be because Antonio Conte isn't there. Maybe he puts a bit too much pressure on them. Maybe they're a little bit frightened of the way he manages and the way he is. But it just seemed yesterday that they looked like they were having fun. In the second half, they were moving the ball quick. They were creating chances. And Emerson Royale, all of a sudden, <laughs> looks like Prime Cafu. I mean, I don't know what's happened to him. But, you know, Pedro Porro's come in. And it's obviously given him a kick up the backside that he needed because he was fantastic again yesterday. And sometimes players need that bit of competition. But I was, I was impressed with Tottenham yesterday. I was. I thought it was good. Back, back, in, back in the top four, Newcastle having a bit of a wobble. And we looked all right. I actually heard that they play your clip um, when you called him Chicken Royale. They actually play that to him before games now and it seems to do the wonders of, of making him now play well. <laughs> Royale with cheese. <laughs> Can I ask both of you just a, a quick question just to understand it a bit more with Stellini in there and, and Antonio Conte not being there. When, I, when an assistant coach takes charge in, in a situation like that, would he change anything up in, in training? Would, he, would, it, would it still all be Antonio Conte's plans? He just... Gets the gets the information and then goes and implements it. Well, from my experience, going back to COVID at, at West Ham when David was away for a couple of, in fact, he was away for three games actually, a League Cup game. The doctor come in the dressing room literally forty five minutes before kick off, said to two of the players, "Go straight home now," and the manager, "Go straight home." Forty five minutes before, I think we played Hull at home, uh, and then subsequently two league games, which we won. Both three and four nil actually. So I, I remember that student. You remember, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Alan Irving took over, but Dave, yeah. because uh, of technology nowadays, Dave can log in and look at the training grounds. We've got cameras on the training ground mm. every session, so he would tell us what he wanted put into practice, and then he could watch the training session and feed back afterwards on what he's seen. So it's really hands on, and Conte will be the same. How voyeuristic. <laughs> Uh, Jamie, what next then for Spurs? Because top four now, are you feeling like you are going to settle there and stay there? Uh, no, no, I don't <laughs> think that. No, not at all. I mean, I think we'll be in and around it, you know, fourth, fifth. I think what's happened is, is Newcastle have really dropped off. You know, they've stopped winning games, um, picked up a couple of like sort of bore draws and all of a sudden they've they've opened the door. I think the other three, Man City, Arsenal, Man United, I think they're kind of just going to drift away from everyone else and it's going to be between them who, to fight it out for the title. But I think top four is always going to be up for grabs for us. Happens every season. It'll go down to the last three or four games. And, you know, I have to say, a lot of the time I've been saying that we're not good enough with this, with that, and we need to invest and we need to do this. Maybe it's the manager. And... I, and look, he's going for a tough time, Conte, and he's, a, and he's a brilliant manager, a fantastic manager. I just feel like the players are not responding maybe to him. Now, as Stuart said, he might be on Zoom, he might be in the dressing room, he might be doing stuff on the phone. I, I, I don't know, but I just felt like when he's not been there, the players actually look like they enjoy playing a little bit more and it might put too much pressure on him. Interesting. It's like you're kicking him while he's down. He's trying to recover from a from no, an operation, no, and you're I'm saying, not. "Oh, better without Listen, him. Might as well sack him." Brit I'm just have an honest opinion from what <laughs> I've said, of what I can see with my own eyes, and and that's that's all I'm seeing. I I hope to God he 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 gets better and he gets back to what he was. I think maybe he come back too early, and that, and he probably wasn't right on the sidelines, and that probably doesn't help either. You got to come back and be a hundred percent right in the dressing room for the players because they'll. They'll see that and they'll feed off that. So mm -hmm. hopefully it gets better and he comes back in because, you know, he's a brilliant manager and, he and you know, he you can still see us a Conte side in the formation we play and, and, and what we do, but it just looks like the players are enjoying themselves a bit more. A little bit, I think the weight, the weight of him on top of them all the time on the sidelines maybe is off when he's not there. 
Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.